Hello, my name is Martin Zomanis, and I have designed this presentation to shortly summarize the main principles, history, and benefits of 100% hot mix asphalt recycling. You'll find full summary in the overview article, which you can access by clicking link below this video, and I have also created a website that has further discussion on 100% recycling. The conventional drum asphalt plants can, in most cases, recycle only up to 50% wrap hot mix asphalt. Therefore, some modifications to the existing plants are required for production of up to 100% wrap pavements. The major challenges are heating of wrap to the required temperature without catching flame, minimization of binder aging, and control of emissions from binder volatilization. The conventional asphalt plants heat the aggregates by direct flame. Well, for high wrap mixtures, this is undesirable since it causes blue smoke and further ages the already stiff wrap binder. Therefore, most of the available 100% wrap technologies apply indirect heating to gently increase the wrap temperature to the desired level. And there are, in fact, at least 10 readily available technologies for 100% hot mix recycling. I will very shortly summarize a couple of them. The first system that I will show is titled All Wrap Process and it is designed by Wrap Technologies. This plant is located in New York City and is the only process that uses conventional drum but is equipped with patented filtration system to capture blue smoke and keep the emissions well below the US federal requirements. Recycling agent is sprayed on the hot wrap at the dryer dispatch chute and it mechanically mixes with the wrap binder during transportation by drug slide conveyor. Alex Sin Manufacturing Plant is located in California, US. It uses a two-chamber system to heat the wrap drum from outside using seven perpendicularly located burners. Each burner output is controlled separately to provide homogeneous heating of the material. Heat is transferred by conduction through the metal shell and additionally the hot combustion gases are passed through the drum in counterflow direction. In the wrap master processor, designed by wrap process machinery, Hot gases are generated in a separate combustion chamber and passed through the drum in stainless steel heat exchange tubes, as well as heated wall surface to heat the wrap by conduction, convection and radiation. Ratek is a batch asphalt plant type designed by Emac in Turkey. It uses an indirect heating system where hot air is generated in a separate chamber and passed through to originally designed triangular shaped wrap heating unit. Rach 100 by Ammon in Switzerland is another wrap heating unit designed for batch type asphalt plants. A counterflow dryer with two phase drum is used where wrap is heated with hot air and discharged before getting in contact with direct flame. Well, after production, we of course need to deliver the material to paving site, and none of the 100% wrap mixture producers noted any differences in hauling or storage time of. 100% wrap mixtures compared to conventional ones. Video demonstrates paving of 100% wrap mixture in New York City. Five owners of 100% wrap plants were interviewed and all indicated good workability and no differences from any conventional paving process. They noted that totally recycled mixtures are mostly used for private commercial sites like parking lots and industrial areas. In New York City, California and Massachusetts, demonstration sites have also been paved to evaluate the performance of 100% wrap mixtures along with conventional pavements. In the service phase, due to the presence of stiff aged wrap binder, high wrap mixtures are generally perceived to be more prone to thermal and fatigue cracking failures. Rutting can be a problem if rejuvenator is overdosed or due to slow rejuvenator diffusion that might cause soft outer layer of binder film and thus accelerate rutting early in pavement life. Due to the oil embargo, at the end of 70s there was a tremendous interest in high wrap production, and listed here are field projects that used 100% wrap mostly as part of Federal Highway Administration Project number 39. Among several good performing sites, there were a couple that failed due to reveling and rutting, and had to be repaved. Significant smoke from burning wrap binder although expected was another problem noted by researchers. However, many of the problems raised from using unprocessed wrap in plants that were not designed to handle high wrap mixtures. 
Unfortunately, due to these isolated failures, from there on a comfortable approach of using low rap content was adopted. Use of rejuvenators got a bad fame and high rap mixtures were further not encouraged by introduction of super pave specifications. In the latest years there are only a couple of studies dealing with 100% rap hot mix pavements and some that have evaluated the extracted rap binder as integral part of lower rap content studies. Research by Malik, Zaumanis and Silva generally have concluded that with the use of optimum dose of appropriate rejuvenator it is in fact possible to ensure 100% rap properties similar to those of virgin mixtures as evaluated by performance related tests in lab. The authors visited and visually evaluated streets in New York City that were paved using 100% rap. Although cracking was noticed in several sites after 5 to 11 years of performance, they had the similar condition to control sections paved next to them. High rap recycling process should start at the milling operation of old asphalt pavement. The goal should be to separate layers of different values by milling in partial or full depth and to minimize the fines content by employing faster forward speeds, slower drop rotations and careful choice of milling heads. The milled asphalt pavement, of course the rejuvenator, and if necessary any virgin aggregates or virgin binder should be delivered to the asphalt plant. For production of 100% wrap pavements, screening of wrap will be necessary in most cases to allow for mixed design and give control over fines and binder content. Crushing should be avoided to reduce fines content since this in many cases limit the amount of wrap that can be used in mixed design. In storage, wrap should be treated just like any virgin material. Any contamination should be avoided including startup waste. If possible, the materials from different projects or having different values can be stored in separate stockpiles. However, if space is a restriction, they can be blended together before processing. Moisture content should be limited, since it can lower production rate or limit it altogether. A study by NCAT has showed that wrap variability is generally smaller than that of virgin aggregates. But of course, constant quality control of wrap, including aggregate gradation and gravity, as well as binder content and properties, is required. NCHRP report 752 for high wrap mixtures recommends the testing frequency as illustrated in the table. For production of 100% wrap mixtures, the traditional mix design procedure has to be modified. The key components include determination of preliminary mix composition, extraction of binder to determine its properties, choice of appropriate rejuvenator, and adjusting the total binder content to pass volumetric and performance specification requirements. The adjustment of Total binder content is one major difference from a conventional mix design procedure. For example, to increase the binder content in 100% wrap mixture, we can choose a source wrap that originally has higher binder content, or we can just increase the fines content since they are usually more binder rich. Alternatively, we can choose a less effective recycling agent, or simply increase its dosage to provide higher total binder content. Of course, addition of virgin binder is always an option as well. Another major consideration is the choice of rejuvenator and its optimum dosage. In short term, rejuvenators should rapidly diffuse into the wrap to soften its binder in order to produce workable mixtures that can be easily paved and compacted to the required density without the hazard of producing harmful emissions. Major part of diffusion should be completed before traffic is allowed to avoid reduction of friction and increased sensibility to rutting. In the long term, rejuvenators should reconstitute chemical and physical properties of the aged asphalt binder and maintain stability for another service period. The binder rheology has to be altered to reduce fatigue and low temperature cracking potential without over softening the binder to cause rotting problems. Unfortunately, ensuring correspondence to mixture volumetric or binder specifications, be those empirical or super requirements, has been shown in many studies to be insufficient to claim true wrap rejuvenation. In binder testing, 100% diffusion of rejuvenator into the wrap binder film is artificially assumed, but multiple studies have concluded that this is likely not the case in real life. Rejuvenators or their overdose can also cause reduction in adhesion and cohesion in asphalt mixture 
and thus performance testing of mixture is highly recommended. As part of HiRap research study, NCHRP report 752 actually offers a range of performance related test methods to choose from. The specific test methods should be chosen based on the local climatic conditions, anticipated failure modes, as well as experience, confidence and availability of pass fail criteria. The report also notes that further research is necessary to develop reliable methods and criteria for fatigue, top-down and reflection quirking evaluation. Rejuvenator diffusion can significantly affect performance of asphalt mixes. In mix design, assumption of full binder activation while part of it is actually behaving as black rock can lead to soft and under asphalted mixtures causing cracking and raveling failures of the pavement. On the other hand, assumption of black rock situation when wrap binder actually contributes to mix performance will lead to soft pavements because of high binder content. It is also critically important to allow full rejuvenator diffusion before performance testing of mixtures in lab, especially concerning long-term properties. 100% recycling provides us with the opportunity to close the material cycle and create a truly sustainable construction. A cradle-to-gate environmental analysis was performed and, not surprisingly, 100% drab mixtures can significantly reduce emissions and energy demand compared to virgin mixtures. Multiple reports as well as discussion with 100% RAP mixed producers showed that assuming equal moisture content, RAP use generally doesn't increase energy use compared to virgin mixtures. Therefore, the only differences are in preparing the constituent materials. Processing of RAP and production of rejuvenator of course creates some emissions, but the quantity is multiple times lower than that required for production of virgin aggregates and virgin binder. As can be seen in the graph, the calculation shows 35% CO2 equivalent savings per ton of paved 100% wrap mixture compared to virgin pavement. Of course, durability of 100% wrap pavement is one major question and therefore it's not yet included in the calculation. Well, one last question is how much does it cost? As you can see in the graph, binder price has increased three times over the last decade. Compared to that, wrap costs up to $30 per ton and in many urbanized areas with surplus of the material, the contractors will often actually pay to dispose of the material. So obviously, the largest benefit for the wrap use is in binder replacement. A typical mix design was assumed including 5.1% binder content and 0.6% rejuvenator. 100% wrap production would of course introduce some new expenses that include purchasing of rejuvenator, wrap processing and quality control, as well as performance-related testing and pollution control. Well, but as you can see in the figure, calculation shows that depending on the necessity to pay for wrap, the cost of 100% mixture by taking into account all of the mentioned expenses would still allow to reduce the material-related costs by 50 to 70% compared to virgin mixes. Well, of course, as mentioned in the beginning, production of 100% wrap hot mix asphalt would require some investments in the plant technology. Therefore, another calculation was performed to determine the break-even time in years for three investment levels and two annual production rates. The vertical axis demonstrates contractors' profit per ton of mix, which, because of unproven technology at this time, is likely not going to be directly linked with the savings showed in previous graph. However, a price reduction by as much as $20 per ton of mix compared to virgin mixes would still promise the contractor at least $12 profit per ton. At this margin, 1 million investment would allow to break even in less than 3 years at a conservative 30,000 ton per year production rate. 100% wrap mixtures are not the solution for everywhere due to the simple reason that sufficient amount of reclaimed asphalt is necessary. But there are large urbanized areas around the world and in the US that have high surplus of wrap that is currently wasted in low value applications or stockpiled as you can see in this image from New Jersey. New Jersey Asphalt Payment Association has provided us with RAP usage statistics for the last six years. 41% of RAP is not used in hot mix asphalt applications, and during the last six years, at least 4.5 million tons of excess RAP has been available for construction. So we believe that there is definitely a niche for 100% RAP production. Most obviously, the major urbanized areas around the world and in the US likely generate enough material to allow production of 100% recycled hot mix asphalt. 
a procedure for ensuring production and acceptance of 100% dry pavements that would be developed by local legislators would greatly advance the implementation of this technology. This was just a quick summary of the discussion in the review article. Please be sure to download it below this video or through my website and of course you can contact me through email with any relevant questions. Thank you very much.